Hello and welcome. My name is Lauren Elizabeth with Lauren Elizabeth Animal Art. If you're new here, welcome. I'm a pet and wildlife acrylic artist. I also do Copic markers and colored pencil art. I am a color phonetic, and that is what we'll be doing in this tutorial, just loading up on that color. And this will be the first tutorial in a back to school, fall-esque, even a bit of Halloween almost, some vibes are in this painting to start this new series. So from here on out for the next few weeks, I'll be doing really fun, colorful, back to school fall paintings. And in one week, guys, one week, next Sunday is my launch date for my Etsy shop. I'm very optimistic that this will go well and smoothly and I'll learn as I go. And if you need a reminder or you'd like to see the updates on the shop, you can follow me as a VIP subscriber. My email list is linked down below. Also on social media, Instagram and Facebook, I'm very active on there too. All right, creatives, without further ado, let's get painting. <laughs> All right, so I'm using a nine by 12 canvas panel. Again, the traceable and the instructions are all linked down below. Let's go through these colors. So I'm using white, violet, bright aqua green, raw sienna, yellow ochre, black, fluorescent pink, and then later in this tutorial, I'll add orange and phthalo cyanin blue. So the colors I'm going to choose for the background is a violet and a bright aqua green and some white. Okay, so I'm going to mix up these two colors. I'm going to do a violet with a little bit of white. I want to have it these darker colors. It might actually be too light, so I'm going to pull some of that aside and get all the rest of my violet in there. Wipe my palette knife off and then I'll move to my turquoise. I'll just do my bright aqua green with a little bit of white. And I'll be blending these two at the top around the head. So I'm going to mix these two colors together in a separate pile. I'm actually gonna make that darker. I don't have much blue left, but I will, I want this to be darker. This side is where we have our, our low lights, so I want to add phthalo blue to this. Get this a darker value. Okay, that should be good. We might have to darken that up later, but let's just take a little bit of that and a little bit of our violet and blend these two together and we'll be able to blend some on our canvas as well. What a beautiful color. All right, so I'm gonna uh, grab a an angle brush, my favorite, just to get in and around all the little curves make sure it's clean and damp and i'll start with the darker color the left side now i'll be using my arteza size 10 angle brush just want to note here save these colors the three colors we just mixed up for the background will be pulling into the owl so try your best to keep them damp you can also cover your paint palette with saran wrap or aluminum foil between painting sessions now what can also help, aside from like a spray bottle as well, is to mix up more of the color. So just mix up more, it takes a longer time to dry and you'll have more to paint in to the owl. Now I call this the warm up, working on our background. And this is also a great time to just get our minds right, take four deep breaths, Make those strong, deep breaths in through our nose and out through our mouths.
Now what I like to also do to get my mind right before a painting, so I'm not so critical, I'm relaxed, is prayer and scripture. So the scripture that goes along with this painting, Romans 8, 31 from the Good News Translation, in view of all this, what can we say? If God is for us, who can be against us? And another reminder of our confidence and courage in Christ, it's from Ephesians 3, 12. Christ now gives us courage and confidence so we can come to God by faith. Now, if you're still working on that left side, take your time. But without even washing on my brush, I'm going to move to that mixture of our blue, green, and violet. And I'll start working above the head. Also, throughout this tutorial, I really try to keep a slow but steady pace. There's no need to rush, but if it's not quite slow enough for you, feel free to use the pause and play button. And we're going to be working wet and to wet over here and a little bit over there as we pull in some of these violets over. So that's why we want to work relatively fast so that we can keep work wet and to wet. So I'll definitely wash up my brush before I work those violets in. And I'll pick up that violet. Okay, that's great. I like this color a lot. And I'll just blend some on this side. I actually want, I wiped off some of that paint just so I have a dry brush and I can blend that nicely. And I'll wash on my brush again so I can cover that side with violet. And I'm even thinking I want to add some white in the corner here, blend in some white into that violet, just to keep this side a lighter value, just so we make this look darker. Okay, and I'll just pull in some white, blend that together down and also up into that darker violet. See how I have my brush at an angle, my angle brush at an angle, and I'll just wisp that down along the edge and to the bottom. I'll even add a little bit more down here to keep that light. I'm wiping it off just so I can blend it easier with less paint on my brush, like that. Now we'll be working on the owl eyes next, but I recommend letting your canvas dry for maybe five, 10 minutes. That way your palm is not pulling any paint into the drawing, but it's up to you. But I'm going to take my Arteza size one round brush and just black and I'm simply going to fill in the pupils, all the dark shaded areas around the eyebrows and the border around the eyes. So I'll be outlining the eyes as well. Now I really hope this reference photo is more helpful than it is a nuisance coming off and on the screen. I'm a little limited with the amount of space on the screen. I really want you to be able to see the colors, what I'm mixing, even what I'm doing with my brush. So I'll do my best to balance these two things in this tutorial.
Now the area to the right of the left eye and the left of the left eye around the nose, I'll pull that down a little bit more and with lines going in the downward direction. Next, I'm going to wash up my size 1 Arteza round brush. We'll keep using it for the beak. And I'll use our mixture of turquoise and phthalo blue. That's bright aqua green and phthalo cyan and blue with a bit of black. We'll use this as the base around the beak. Now I won't fill in the entire beak, but most of it. The top of the beak I'll leave white. I'll kind of close it in, creating this almost like a bottom of a diamond. And I'll cut in with clusters of lines into the feathers to the left and right of the beak. So as you can see, I'm outlining it first and then I'll fill in the bottom. We need to get our value in our background on the left side, around here, around that dark. And so what I'm gonna do is use that color that we use for the background, pick some of that up, pull it into some black, and just redo this left side. Not all of it though. I wanna actually keep some of it at the top here. Now here's another color. You wanna make sure you have enough mixed up because I end up adding some on the left ear quite a lot of it there and we pull it in to the bottom left of the owl All right, so here I go, same color, same angle brush. I'm gonna cut up into the left lower side of the owl, bringing it all the way from the left to the right, and I'll stop right below the beak. Now I'm intentionally leaving brush strokes here to create some texture. We'll already start creating what looks like feathers here just by leaving our brush strokes over top the white.
As you can see, I did not have enough mixed, so I have to remix the same color. And I'll just fill in the majority of that left ear, except for the top of it on the right. I just want to leave that white, but pull this all the way down above the left eye. Now the area of feathers right on top of the head that sits a little bit over top the eyes, I'm going to glide my brush along that line using the flat edge of my angle brush. Now if you look on the other side of that, there's an angled line at the top of the frame that we'll be painting around the face. That's where I'll block in this paint. I won't go outside of that. Next, we'll be working on that frame that borders around the face and below the beak. We'll need a smaller brush for this. I'm gonna grab my size five Arteza angle brush now, continuing with our navy blue. I'm gonna make sure my brush is clean and damp, like always. I'm gonna pick up some of my navy blue and start working from the top left all the way down to the left of that beak. Now I highly recommend you watch me first before giving it a try yourself because there's certain areas on this line that I keep thin and others that I keep thick and expand those brush strokes in towards that left eye. Like right here at an angle using the flat edge, I'm gonna pull those brush strokes to the right. I create a bold line that connects to the top left of the left eye Then gradually I'll work down along that border, the frame around the face, gradually decreasing the thickness of this line until it's really thin, which I'll pull down where it ends right below the beak. I'll pull this paint down, closing that gap. Now here's a short little intermission in case you need to catch up or maybe some areas look a little thin and you need to touch them up with your background colors or maybe you need to mix up some more so they stay damp and we can keep on working them into the owl. All right, so I'm going back to my navy blue, our phalocyne in blue with a bit of turquoise and black. And with my Arteza size five angle brush, I'm gonna pull this area down right to the lower right of the left eye. I'm also gonna bring that left shadow up a little bit with just a few brush strokes. And what I recommend the area right below the beak that we blocked in with this color, I recommend reapplying it just so we have wet paint there. That way we can easily blend this, combining colors with our blue from our background. And that will be our next step. So after you've reapplied that navy blue there, wash out your brush thoroughly and we'll move on. So going along with this, shadow it does climb to on this side as well so i'm just going to pull in this color the one that we originally painted for this side of the background i'm going to start working blending that in with some of the darks below here so it fades nicely to the right now take another few deep breaths here we're going to get really abstract and loose i'm going to force you to just let go of those imperfections Allow this to be a very 
free intuitive process, making this your own creation. So next I'll work up this blue, framing the right side now like we did the left. But I will paint up a little bit more so that the feathers are going this way. All right, so we're gonna mix up those colors for the eyes. My absolute favorite color to have in almost all my animal eyes is yellow ochre and white. It makes this beautiful gold. And I'm gonna mix that now, yellow ochre and white for the right side to complement our violets. That's one of my favorite things, gold. It's just such a beautiful royal color. Even add a little bit of raw sienna in there if you want kind of a deeper, richer gold. And then to complement the blues, I want to create an orange. So I will mix up fluorescent pink, another way that I like to mix up an orange, a very different orange and white and yellow ochre. Don't have much space here to mix. I want that to be darker. So I will actually add a bit of orange into this and more of my fluorescent pink. I'm trying to make this more vivid and darker so saturated that it's consistent with the dark values on the left side of the owl because we know that light source is hitting real strong on the right which means that left side will be darker and all the left side i'm going to grab my favorite brush size one round brush make sure it's clean and damp and, and very clean i have some blue left in there okay I'll work on the right side. Hopefully your background's dry or tacky so you're not smudging it all in the other parts of the owl. I'm gonna start with my gold and we'll just paint the entire iris. Do, this is going to be a fun little trick. Anytime you're trying to darken an area and you're working with yellow, add a bit of violet. So what we'll do when we get to here, I'm going to paint some gold there first and then before it dries I'll blend in some violet. Just a nice way to darken up an area without making it look muddy, without going with black. We already have enough black there. Okay, so here I go. I have some violet, just hardly any left on my... And I'll just blend that into the yellows at the top. Wash out your brush and go back to your yellow or your gold and blend that up. I just wanted this to be kind of a curved shadow. That's what we want. But we're not done that eye because before it dries, I want to blend in some white. So I just made sure that my brush is clean and damp. Pull in some white, not on the very bottom, but up a little higher than the, the direct bottom. 
and blend that into the yellows. And I've washed off my brush, so now it's just a dry brush and it just pulls the paint that's already on my canvas. And if you need to do that once more, like, like I am, I'm gonna do that one more time in the lower right corner, just to really pull out those highlights. Now, can you guess the color we'll use to darken up the left side? Blue. So we can literally take that blue. We can also add in more phthalo blue. I think that's what I'll do. Just, just to be safe, I'll add the little bit of phthalo blue I have left. And we'll add that to darken up the left eye. So this is the color I'll use for that left eye. I'll paint the full iris in and then darken it up in an angle on both sides. Now take your time if you're still working on that left eye. I'm gonna wash on my brush. While that's wet, I'm gonna pick up some phthalo blue, blend that in with a little bit of phthalo blue in both corners, then go back to my orange and blend that up so it's this real nice smooth shadow. Now I'm gonna touch up the eyes. I'll touch up the iris color that we just painted in, as well as touching up the black areas behind it. So do that now if you need to. Now, if you're new to acrylics and or painting pets and wildlife, I have what's called the Online Animal Art Masterclass. It's been my goal to help beginner and intermediate level artists move to masters of acrylic animal art while reducing stress, anxiety, even depression like I did about seven years ago now. Animal art therapy played an enormous role in my own recovery. Within the online Animal Art Masterclass, you can find my creative color guide, 
going over how I choose, mix, blend, layer, and apply color, my 12-step pet portrait painting process so you can paint any cat or dog, even as a beginner, my master animal fur guide, one I recently completed, going through how I paint all the different types of fur and my specific brush technique, along with my pet portrait commission course, helping those who wanna profit from their pet portraits, along with over 200 pet and wildlife drawing and painting tutorials for the beginner, intermediate, and advanced level artists. So if this would bless you or a friend, I have links to the masterclass down below, but guys, let's get back to this owl. All right, so I've got my angle brush, my size five angle brush. We're gonna work on the feathers on the right side. And I hope you got your violet ready. If not, mix some more up. That was just violet with white. And we're gonna pull that down. But I'm gonna leave a little bit of a triangle here at the top. We don't wanna cover up all that white. And like we did on this side with the dark blue, just gonna leave, leave a little bit at the top of the feathers and pull it down by the eye. And I will bring it down along this frame around the face. Using the, the, I love this brush for this reason. I can create those nice lines using the flat edge. And that's what I'll do. I'll join it with this blue like that. And pull that in just like we did on this side. Pull that up towards the eye and down. But I'm I'm moving around the eye like this. I'm working around the eye. And I'll work a little bit more above above the eye. Just curve around that eyebrow. And thicken up this line too. I should have added a little bit more darkness above this side. And I'm going to do that right now. I want to have a curved line right around this eyebrow as well like I did on the right, on the right side yeah so I'm going back to my blue turquoise with black mixture there that's what I wanted and I'm not done yet with this violet I'm actually gonna pull in some of this violet with raw sienna. So I have a, a raw sienna and violet mixture. And I'm gonna attach it to this blue here and moving down, up and down this way at an angle. I'm gonna bring it to the side, wisping my brush all the way to the end. I want to create this curved strip of white left as if there was a line that came down along the right side and then I'll fill in the rest to the right with this violet and raw sienna mixture. But I won't stop there. I'm gonna pull some of these triangles, these shapely brush strokes that look like triangles into that blue, cutting over top at the bottom. Now 
Next, I'm using my size one liner brush. I'm gonna mix up white with my bright aqua green. Again, that's bright aqua green with white and I'll fill in the white gap we have left on the beak. Creating a very thin line in the dead center of the beak at the top, I'm gonna to pull this light turquoise down. Now you can honestly bypass this step. It's not really necessary because we paint over this area towards the very end. So let's just skip this step, ignore it, and move on, shall we, to the purple feathers. Now what we'll do next is pick up some of our violet, that's violet with white mixture, pull in a tiny bit of black, and we'll pull down some of the shadows, those darker feathers beneath the area on the right side by the right eye. That's with a detail brush. I um, recommend a size one round brush or the liner brush we were just using will work just fine. I wanna darken up this area and pull these feathers down about halfway between here and those horizontal feathers below it. I'll also do this with the navy blue our phalo blue, black, and bright aqua green mixture on the left side of the beak. Now take note to my technique here with my brush and we'll continue this for the feathers throughout the owl. I really want to overlap line after line, just clustering lines, not just filling in white. And at the same time, here's a friendly little reminder to tell you not to get too caught up in one area for too long. We don't want to get caught up in details just yet. We're in the ugly phase if you haven't heard of it. It's a real thing. It can last a very long time. So just be patient, take your time, and do enjoy yourself. Now by now you may want to replace your water and wash your brushes. They might be pretty mucky right now. I'm going to grab my navy blue. I'm going to add a little bit of it, just a little, to this area, this white strip not covering it all up. Then I'll pull in some raw sienna into that and start working down, filling in that white, working down along the left side of the owl. I'm not worried so much about the proper shape here. I will fill in a little bit more of the white. That's really all I'm concerned about for this area. And then I'll start moving to the horizontal feathers to the left of the beak. Now this is a bit tricky. You really have to watch me and listen before you give it a try yourself. So I'm gonna stop here, grab a little bit more paint. I'm gonna create a line above that navy blue line, not pull it all the way to the beak, then leave a gap of white, then filling in between those horizontal curved lines above that. In total, in this little section here, I'll create three lines, and that third line will extend out further than the first line. And very quickly, without washing out my brush, I'll pick up the navy blue without the raw sienna in it, and I'll create a curved line below the brown mixture we applied connecting to that navy blue frame. Now again, here's where we're gonna get real loose and abstract. 
I'm going to create this unusual looking shape at an angle that then leaves unique white negative space that will then paint in with the previous mixture of our navy blue with the raw sienna. Now you definitely may have to mix up more of this color. We're going to be using it quite a bit throughout this tutorial. Now, my goal for this lower left side of the owl is to fill in any white specks that I might have missed with this color and create both these triangular shaped feathers and these pointy bold zigzags at an angle. The lovely part about acrylics is if you don't like it, just cover it up and try again. So if there's any shape that you create that you don't like, Grab some more of that navy blue, paint over it, wash out your brush, and try again. All right, dear creatives, we're gonna take our second intermission here, giving your eyes and body and hands a little break. Stand up, stretch, do a little dance if you need to, or even if you need to replace your water and wash your brushes, take this time now. All right, so we're going in with that navy blue mixed in with a little bit of our raw sienna. And I'll start working with my detail brush right above those three horizontal lines to the left of the beak. I'll pull that line all the way down to the beak, literally touching it. Next, I'll join the far left side inside the frame to the area to the lower right of the left eye, which I'll then connect to the line we just made 
over top the horizontal brown lines. I'll pull in more raw sienna into this mixture and start filling in the white working up until we get to that eyebrow. We want texture here. We want lots of lines clustered closely together. Now for that tiny little eyebrow above the left eye, I'm gonna pull in raw yellow ochre, sorry, into this navy blue and raw sienna mixture. Gonna get that a little bit lighter. All right guys, it's time to wash out our brushes thoroughly. We're gonna mix up the colors for the lighter feathers on the right, to the right of the right eye. I'll mix up yellow ochre, raw sienna, white, and the violet we used for the right side background. Again, that's yellow ochre, raw sienna, white, and the violet we used, which was just violet and white, the same color we used for the right side background. Now listen here because what I'm doing is both covering up the white, not entirely though, and also overlapping that violet, creating these zigzag triangular texture that we've been doing, we did on the left side, closing in this white border that we won't paint in with this color around the right eye. I'll slowly work my way up, filling in the white right above the right eye eyebrow. And I'll do a little color switch. I'll add in a little bit more violet to this in just a minute. So you'll see, I'll pull in some of that violet from our background violet. So here I go, I've darkened this color a little bit with more violet. And I really recommend you mix up more of this color. We're gonna be working it now to the on the horizontal lines to the right of the beak. Now we'll do these horizontal feathers a bit differently than we did the left side horizontal feathers. I want to cluster the lines closer to the beak, but then I'll just draw this along the lines with thick brush strokes cutting into that violet. I'll start with the top and then work down. Now just for this first line, I really thicken up the far right side, joining it with that framed in area. Then I'll start working below it. With a steady hand, I create much thinner lines that connect these two lower lines, and I don't pull them all the way to the beak. If you're referencing the photo on the screen, you can tell I'm not taking every detail and every line for what I'm seeing on the reference photo. I'm only taking pieces of it and then creating my own design. And I added more violet, that's the background violet to the mixture of raw sienna we were just using. I'm gonna create more lines that create a V below the beak that also connect to the lines we created for the frame around the owl's face. So this is just barely leaving much white below these curved lines. 
Now what I'm going to do next looks like I've added more raw sienna, but I had some raw sienna and yellow ochre left on the outside of this paint mixture. I just blended in it in a little bit so it looks lighter. So if you need to, add a smidgen of yellow ochre and raw sienna to just slightly lighten up this brown violet. Now I recommend you watch me first once more before you try it. I'm not going to fill in all the rest of the white and the area surrounding the beak. I'll leave gaps, just thick and thin lines that both fill in some of that white and overlap the navy blue on the left side and the brown violet on the right side. Here we go, our next color mixture we'll need a lot of, so mix up enough. It's yellow ochre and raw sienna. That's yellow ochre, raw sienna, equal parts of both. Now you may want to switch to say a larger detail brush or your small angle brush size five. It's entirely up to you, but we're gonna fill in the white, most of it, but not all, to the right of that purple frame on the right side. Now right here, I'm almost directly to the right of the right eye. I'll pull in more of that background violet into this color. So now here, as I work my way down, I'll just go along that border. It's where it starts to turn more of like that blue, goes from a violet to a blue. I'll leave random gaps below it that are more boxy, triangular shaped that we'll use a different color to fill in. I'm going to start pulling this end down and like we did on the left side where I left gaps of the navy blue and then I created these zigzag and triangular feathers. That's what I'll do on this side, but they're going to be brighter, a little bit longer, thinner gaps in between. We can see a bit more detail on this right side because of that light source hitting it. With this color, I'll also pull in a bit more texture to the lower right below the beak.
Now get ready guys, this is like the grand finale of color. We're just gonna be blending lots of colors, both filling in the white that we have left and doing lots of beautiful layers and texture. Oh, it's so much fun. I'm mixing up some of the violet from the background and lots more white. We're gonna be still using our detail brush. My size one Arteza brush is my absolute favorite. And very carefully, not pulling it down too much over top that brown, I'll fill in the white surrounding the right eye. Now friends, this is another one of those colors that you need to have enough of to last throughout the tutorial. We'll be going back to it. Still using this lavender, I'll overlap some of that violet brown, pulling it down into the lower brown while also filling in that white. The key here is to cut in a little bit to both layers without covering it up entirely so we can still see where those horizontal feathers start and end. Now this may seem a little unusual, but I won't move all the way to the right on this lower level of feathers. I'll leave that white and start filling in the white that we have left below this area. I'll continue with this lavender, creating the same kind of boxy triangular shapes that are more sporadic this time and a little bit smaller. Now this is where I'm going to encourage you to break free and not try to copy mine, but really try to make it your own. It's going to feel very unusual. It's going to feel a little scary, but just try not to judge it. Just play. Get absorbed in the colors and the texture and every single line and brushstroke. Have fun with it. Don't try to make it a certain way. Let it become what it will be. All right, so we'll go back to this color. So don't mix all your violet into it. We wanna save it, but into a little area of it, mix in more violet so we can make this darker purple. And we'll start filling in more of the white, same kind of texture, same kind of feathers, overlapping some of the browns and blues and the lower layers without entirely covering them up. Now here is where we'll fill in that white. This is the, like the lower level horizontal feather. I'll draw that in towards the violet on the right. And then right below it with very short stubby lines, I'll create another layer of horizontal feathers. All right, I'll switch back to my light violet. Thank you. 
I'll use this light violet with my detail brush to create these short lines that just border that violet frame. I'll be working down along the outside of it, but not all the way down. As I work down, they'll become shorter and shorter until I'll trail off to a line, and then I'll fill in the white on that right eye eyebrow. All right, so before we move on to the white that we have left on the left side of the owl, I'm going to go around and do some touch-ups with this lavender, fill in any white gaps, make any small adjustments. For our next color, working on this side, the feathers to the left of the beak, I'm going to mix up a gray just with a tiny bit of black and white. I'd say this is going to be more of a medium value, so not a light gray, but a medium value gray. So if you're new to my tutorials, we don't want it a real dark gray or a super light gray. We want it right there in the middle. And what I want to do is make these more clusters of lines on this area and then more horizontal like strips down here. I'll show you what I mean. So I'm just curling this down right around that beak on the left side. And then we'll use that same color for the strips below. And I'll work right along this line so that I have working below that, that line of violet. Even bring some of this up as lines right over here. Now I like this gray so much that I'm gonna just mix up a little bit more for this little eyebrow here, which I wanna just kind of feather over top the brown, just like that. Next, what I want to do is mix up some yellow ochre into that gray with more white. So that's black, white, and some yellow ochre. Keep that a medium value. And right here, add a little bit, just like we did a light violet here. That might actually be too light, so I'm going to go darker, adding in more yellow ochre to that. And a little bit more black. cluster lines just like we did here by this eye. There's a little bit less because we don't have as much light hitting it. And this is a good color. We'll keep using this one for other parts of the feathers. Now I'll be adding some unique designs, lines, and shapes with this color on the left side. 
you may want to just watch me. I'm not really trying to keep this owl looking perfectly symmetrical, but I am trying to keep the lightness in relatively the same areas with more of it, of course, on the right side. So where I see a little bit of the light touching the feathers on the left, I'm either using angled triangular lines that are clustered closely together or some horizontal lines. We're really going to pay attention to where that light is hitting each little individual feather and trying to gradually progress from dark to light using more delicate brush strokes, having wider gaps in between brush strokes. Now, if you notice to the left of this navy blue frame on the left side, I'm not going to fill it in. I'm just dabbing here and there where the light is barely touching this area. Now, I'm going to go a little bit lighter with my violet on this side. When acrylic dries, it can often look darker, and I definitely think that's what we don't want. We don't want it to look too dark on that side. So we'll do the same thing with that as the base so we won't cover up all of it. And I'll just make a lighter uh, violet this time with white and violet. Still with my size one round brush. And I'll just create these feathers over top. That base layer, it's like the perfect base layer so it worked out. And then we'll work it down along just like we did here, except we see a little bit more feathers on this side. So I'm going to create more lines within those strips. And I'll even pull some over into this area as well. I'll use this color to highlight this eyebrow, just like we did on the left side, and right around the eye. Covering up any leftover white that you might have missed, I definitely see some on mine. All right, so next I'm going to switch, we're going to switch colors here. I'm going to mix up a good amount of yellow ochre and raw sienna. This is what we'll use for this leftover white we have. We'll cover up the, the entire area and then we'll go in with our darks. I'm using my size 5 Arteza angle brush. All right, so let's fill in the entire area that we have white. You don't have to worry too much about the texture here over top. I just want to make sure I don't leave any white for now. We'll get that texture with our top layers, with our smaller detail brushes.
What I will do though for this ear, if you watch me using the flat edge of my angle brush, I'm just gonna cut down like this in rows right into that blue. See how I did that? And I'll do that on both sides. Now while we let this dry, because we're not going to be blending really anything into it, we're going to be layering over top. While we let that dry, I'm going to mix in some more white and yellow ochre into this color we were just using. So that's yellow ochre, raw sienna, and white, getting a little bit lighter. I'm using my size one round brush. What I'll do is just create more texture over top these areas, these brown areas that look just like that. Okay, so here we go. The, the color we'll mix, working on the feathers on the top here, is a bright aqua green with our phalo blue, but more phalo blue than our bright aqua green. Okay, size one round brush. For this design, I'm very closely clustering short lines in rows. They range in size a little bit, but for the most part, they're about the same length, so about an inch, maybe half an inch long. Some of them will be overlapping and then others will have the brown from the base layer separating them. Now I'm working up into the left, not going further than the center of the head while leaving a very thin strip of our brown light mixture from the bottom around the left edge.
Now, once I get to the very top of the head, that's where I'm gonna start moving to the right, but still keeping it to the top of the head. Alright, so now for the right side, we'll get some more violets in there. And we want this about the same value as the background. That's going to be the tricky part. So we want to blend violet with white. Oh, that's black. And do the same exact thing. You might need to test it out first to see if it's the right proper color. I'll even do some blending into that dark blue that we applied. See, that's a little too light, so I'll add in more violet. And if you watch me, I'm just gonna blend in some of that into the blue so that they join nicely. Now I want to mention this before your navy blue that we just applied dries in case you want to do this. But at the very end, I added more bright aqua green to my navy blue and only added that to the feathers, the shapely horizontal feathers in the upper left on the head, like over top this rounded area. And just a few, I went over that with a more bright aqua green navy blue mixture. All right, so I'm gonna make this ear, even though we kind of have a yellow eye, I'm gonna make this side yellow ear. The top of this ear will be that color, or close enough to it. So I'm gonna mix up yellow ochre and white. I may need to add some raw sienna in, in there too, we'll see. So that's with my size one round brush. And just like we did with the base layer, I'm gonna cut in with wide gaps in between And they'll even come out into that turquoise deep blue background. And I'll feather it into the side. See why I did that? I'll just cluster short lines on the side there. We'll use this color again. We'll not, we'll actually use it quite a lot. side that's just yellow ochre white and fluorescent pink now much later I decide to go more pink with this color so it's up to you what color direction you want to go if you want to make this more orange add in more yellow ochre to the pink if you want to make this more pink add less yellow and more white and fluorescent pink And 
then just like the left side, we'll just pull some in to join it, connect it to the head. It's always helpful to keep these colors damp in case you need to add another layer to it if it's too thin over top some of these violets and dark blues. All right, so let's mix up a yellow ochre and white combination so that we can pull this down along here. And I think we also might pull it down up there. We'll see. So that's white and yellow ochre. just going to carefully pull it into the dark blue. The feathers are going out and then down. It's more like this on this area and then down on above the beak. Now this can be tricky. You don't want your brush strokes because we're cutting into that navy blue to be too clumpy, chunky. <laughs> you want to keep the tip of your brush very thin but still be able to create these stubby short feathers. That's the hard part. So make sure you regularly wash out your brush dry it so it's still damp but not sopping wet and not drying your cloth or paper towel. See how I'm gonna then turn my brush as I move down, it's, it's turning up like that at an angle on the far upper left side, but then it starts to point more downwards. So I wanna keep my brush real thin. I know getting those lines is not always easy be careful about bringing the blue. I just brought in some blue to that area and I wanna make sure that I go around it. Same thing, I'll work down and up along the right side. keep these lines the same length on both sides and going in the opposite direction. And I will pull some up over top some of that orange yellow. All right, so we're gonna create a beautiful, dark, smoky turquoise with phthalo blue, a little bit of black, and bright aqua green. Bright aqua green. <laughs> this is gonna be lighter than any of the navy blues we've made thus far, but still keep it dark. I'm gonna be creating more texture, more feathers that overlap the ones we've created, so try and keep them more triangular, more boxy, more linear, and with wide gaps in between. Do little dabs on the left side. Closer to the right side, we want thicker, more evident feathers. On the left side, we're more hinting where those feathers are. Just little hints with the dabs of our dark and medium values that we applied there.
Next, I'm going to wash out my brush and darken this color we were just using by adding in more phthalo blue and a little bit more black. We'll use this to touch up, add more contrast to that beak, working in a vertical way on the left and right sides of that beak, cutting up into some of those lines, those little feathers. Now below that light turquoise highlight we added, I'll fill in more of this dark blue below that to the left of the beak. Now very carefully, I'll cut into those light grays and light violet feathers to really make this a little bit more realistic, cutting in in a way that creates more of a thin line that cuts over top layers over top the beak. I'll actually also do this below the gray feathers, so below and above them to cut in and just make both ends thinner. I'll apply this very same technique, but mix up a different color using violet, white, and raw sienna, and a very thin amount of paint on my brush, clean damp brush, to just cut in over top those lavender feathers. Now very carefully, I'll use this brown violet to cut in between the horizontal layers of feathers. Now that line that almost looks like the owl's tired, <laughs> I'll cut over top some of that lavender in this shaded area with this violet brown. Moms, you know well what I mean, those dark circles under the eyes. Well, hey, look, we can make them look beautiful. I'll do the same thing below the left eye with the navy blue we recently mixed up. It's a little bit more blue, a little bit lighter, but that's okay. It'll still work. Now, one of my goals for this year has been to add in more green to my painting. It's just a color I'm intimidated by. I don't really know how to use much. It's not, not a color I don't like, but I just have trouble using it. So I'm gonna pull in more greens gradually by creating a turquoise with phthalo blue, bright aqua green, and lots of white. I talk a lot about this in my tutorials, but a way that I helps me finish a painting is by adding in those joiner colors, the medium values that help to join the extreme lights with the very dark values. And I'm doing that with this one, joining that very light brown with the violet, brownish violet beneath it. So where you see those big jumps, overlap some more zigzag, boxy, and triangular shaped feathers. Now 
Now, if you remember, we added a very light, thin strip of violet clustered lines on the outer part of the purple frame. Well, on the outside of that, I'm gonna add this turquoise, just with more short lines that border that. Then straight on the canvas, I'm gonna mix in a brighter green, pulling in yellow ochre into that. Yellow and blue make green, so you don't necessarily have to mix it up if you don't want to, or you can even mix up a more vivid bright green with cadmium yellow and phthalo blue and white. Boy, that will really make a rich, vibrant green. Or you can do what I do, keep it more subtle by on your paint palette, then mixing up yellow ochre white and phthalo blue. What I've learned in my efforts to add in more green, you can add some layers next to or close by to where you've added pinks or some reddish oranges or reds. Any type of red is best friends with green. All right, creatives, we're nearly finished. This is touch up time. So where you have leftover white specks, I'll try to match those colors so that I can add another layer if it's not already damp on my paint palette. I see some very thin layers that we used for the background and by the left ear, that navy blue. So I'll mix up more of that with black, phthalo blue, and our bright aqua green. I'm not a big stickler about getting it the exact color matching perfectly. I am gonna get close enough to it and then see how I can work it in. I'm gonna remix our color of raw sienna with some of our navy blue. I even recommend some yellow ochre in there too, just a smidge. You don't wanna add lightness to this. It's okay if it's slightly different in color, but as far as how light or dark it is, you wanna keep it about the same value. And that's what I'll do, just mixing that up and reapplying that to the thin layers on the left side. Now this is one of my absolute favorite colors. It's a brighter turquoise than we've used thus far, a lot more bright aqua green, a lot less phthalo blue, and some white to just add more color over top some of those areas we've already added a darker tur turquoise to. We're refreshing our colors, pulling them out so they're brighter, happier, and more vivid. I'll do the same thing to the darker violet. It's the original violet. I'm trying to get it as close to that violet as possible that we applied to the background. I'll mix that up with violet and white and I'll apply that to some of the violet feathers and the frame. I'll add a little bit more texture over top that thin lavender border above this frame. I'll just cut into that ever so slightly. 
And below that, where it cuts into that yellowish brown. All right, creatives, we have reached the end of our owl tutorial. I just wanna tell you two things that I did at the very end, actually the following day. I mixed up yellow ochre and white to add a slight highlight, just like we did in the lower right corner of the right eye. I did it in the lower left corner of the left eye. And like I mentioned before, I pulled out the pinks on the right ear. So I just mixed up more yellow ochre fluorescent pink, but with more fluorescent pink, a lot more white, a little bit less yellow ochre to just refresh those pinks on the, on the right ear. All right, creatives, don't forget to sign your work. I hope you enjoyed yourself and learned a thing or two. If you have any tutorial requests for this series, let me know. Leave them in the comments down below. If you enjoyed this tutorial, be sure to like and subscribe. Have a blessed day. Bye.